Sarah here. In this video, I'm going to be going over neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are really important to know for pathophysiology and for pharmacology. For pathophysiology, a lot of neurotransmitters cause the diseases. Too much of this one, too little of this one causes the disease. And for pharmacology, a lot of the medications are aimed at either increasing the neurotransmitter or decreasing. So this is why it is extremely important for you to understand what the neurotransmitters do and how they affect the body so that you'll be able to understand medication and diseases. So let's get started. So what are neurotransmitters? Neurotransmitters, how I like to understand them, just think of two circles near each other that are not touching each other, but they're right near each other. The two circles are neurons. They want to send a message to each other but they're not touching each other, so they can't. There's a tiny space in between them. That tiny space is called the synapsis. So in order to, for neuron A to get the message to neuron B, something has to go between and relay the message. That's what a neurotransmitter is. It's a chemical messenger that will go between one circle, one neuron, to the next neuron. And that's how they relate the message. So now, what types of neurotransmitters are? are there. Neurotransmitters can either be divided by types or by function. By function, what they do is that they're either excitatory or inhibitory or both. Excitatory neurotransmitters, how I like to think about it, is the light switch on. When you turn on the light switch, the light goes on. The same thing with excitatory neurotransmitters. Excitatory basically means that you're creating an action potential. You're creating something to happen. Inhibitory is the opposite. You're shutting the light off. You're causing it to stop happening. So when neurotransmitters get to the next neuron, the next circle, they either could cause it to excite, turn on the switch, or turn off a switch. Or they could do both. Some neurotransmitters do both in different settings. But basically, those are the two. There's also one more type under the function, which is called modulatory. And those basically is that it's capable of turning on more than one neuron at one time. But I wouldn't really focus on that for now. Just remember excitatory, switch on, inhibitory, light switch off. So neurotransmitters can also be divided by types. You have the amino acid, which everything under there starts with a G. GABA, glutamate, and glycin. For the purpose of our video, we're not really going to focus on glycin because you don't really have to know that for nursing school. The next class is monoamines. Monoamines includes dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and histamine. And the next class is acetylcholine, a class in itself. And after that, we have other types like unconventional, which is nitric acid, but I wouldn't really focus on that either because you don't have to know that for nursing school. So I'm gonna go over all the seven main neurotransmitters that you have to know. I'm gonna explain what the action is and what happens if you have too much and too little of them. So we're gonna go by this chart that I made over here. Number one is dopamine. What dopamine does is that it's in charge of the pleasure reinforcement and also some motor control. How I like to remember it is dope. You know when you say Lego with dope? So that means like um, they're always happy and stuff like that. When something makes you happy, you're going to do it again, right? If you like to eat chocolate, it makes your body have like a pleasure feeling. So you're going to eat it again and you're going to kind of get addicted to it. So that's pretty much what dopamine is. It's a pleasure reward center that you get when you do certain stuff, certain feelings. And you're obviously going to want to do it again because it's giving you that pleasure feeling. If you have too much of dopamine, it could cause schizophrenia. If you have too little, it could cause Parkinson's. Like we said before, it also has to do with motor neuron. So how I like to remember it is dope, like someone's always on a high, and um, we'll just keep doing whatever they're doing to maintain their high like that. The next one, serotonin. Serotonin is mainly it affects the mood, hunger, sleep, and arousal. How I like to remember this is serotonin is a really long word, like 
serotonin has a few different like um divisions so it's gonna affect all those the mood sleep cycle too much of it just think about it if it affects the mood right too much of it is gonna make you maniac crazy and too little is gonna make you depressed the opposite so i just remember serotonin the long word and then i remember about the mood the sleep cycle and everything else like that the next one is GABA. So GABA is the inhibitory. It's like the major inhibitory neurotransmitter. When I said inhibitory before, I said you turn off the light. So what GABA is going to do, it's going to relax and calm you. What I like to remember is GABA as in Gabby. Gabby is always calm. And if you have too much of it, so think about someone who's too much, like way too like that. You're going to have sleeping and eating disorders. If it's too little, so think about it, if they're never relaxed, they're just anxious. They're going to have anxiety. The next one is acetylcholine. What acetylcholine, how I like to remember it is M&M, &M, memory and muscle contraction. So if someone has too much muscle contraction, they're going to have muscle spasms, seizures. If someone has too little, it's going to be like, paralysis, Hutchinson disease. Also, like we said, it's also MNM, MNM, so it's also memory. So you're also going to have Alzheimer's if you have too little of the acetylcholine. The next one is epinephrine, which I like to combine with the next one, norepinephrine. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are both involved in the fight or flight thing. So if you have a beer coming after you, your body is going to go into um, the fight or flight. It's not just going to stand there and then five minutes later be like, oh, there's a beer. Or, for example, if you put your hand on a fire, you're going to pull it right away out. And that's thanks to the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. So these are going to cause your body to go into fight or flight and react like that. So the epinephrine is the, is the fight or flight and the norepinephrine is like your increased arousal. Um and alertness at that time that you have. So that it causes like a lot of stuff to happen in the body. Um, basically it's going to increase your heart rate, it's going to increase your blood flow, and it's going to turn off all the unimportant stuff. Like at that time you don't need to eat. Your um, appetite doesn't need to be increased. You want to shut off all like the unimportant stuff and the important stuff like your heart rate and everything else is going to go up. And last but not least is glutamate. So glutamate is in turning in memory. How I like to remember this is that whenever people are learning or studying for school, they always just go on Instagram and just see like glutes, these like butt workouts and like post pictures and posing. So people end up, instead of learning, they end up just, you know, seeing the glutamate pictures. So that's what I just think about. Every time you learn, you end up going there and seeing the pictures. And if you have impairment or any deficit in this it's going to be cognitive impairment because memory so cognitive impairment i hope that helps you that's how i remember the neurotransmitters and neurotransmitters are really important to know because they will really help you understand the disease and understand the medication like for instance for one example we said serotonin we said serotonin leads to depression so an SSRI, which is an antidepressant, which um, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitor, is going to cause a raise in serotonin level. So if you know that serotonin affects the mood and you have too little, it makes you depressed, then you'll know the SSRI, which is making the serotonin stay in the brain, it's going to make it go up. So just stuff like this is really going to help you if you understand the underlining like pathophysiology. Thank you for watching. If you want to get this video in a PDF document, check out below and please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thank you.